Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt and this is Secondhand Home Theater. Here today, we finally made it. This is the last video in my Alien Week series where I talked about the Alien franchise uh, for this entire week leading up to Alien Romulus, which depending what time this video posts uh, has already been out in theaters. So here today in this video, I'm just gonna talk about some theories and speculation about what I think we're gonna see in Alien Romulus. So let's get to it. So first and foremost, I want to throw this out here. Uh, it's just a little bit of a spoiler warning. A little graphic is going to pop in here, maybe with a sound effect. I don't know, but it's going to come in here uh, because I know two of these little things I'm going to talk about have kind of been alluded to or kind of mentioned in trailers and in some news that I heard kind of unbeknownst to myself. I wasn't seeking it out. It just kind of popped into something I was looking at. But uh, I am going to mention some small spoilers. I don't know how big a role it's going to play in the actual movie. But I do want to put a spoiler warning about that in case you don't want anything spoiled. I, I definitely recommend if you're a fan of the, the series, the franchise, go see Alien Romulus. And then come back, watch my video from here on out, and kind of just see how well I did if I was even remotely close to anything I'm going to come up with, or if this is just, you know, the little kid in me, the eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old Matt just coming up with crazy ideas <laughs> that, that I want to see in this movie. But, uh, you know, if you want, doesn't bother me, go see the movie, come back and then see how, <laughs> how well of a job I did, how good of a job I did, or how poorly <laughs> I came up with these ideas. Uh, but also, again, spoiler warning, I'm going to talk about a few things that were released and then who knows, I might be on the mark and my crazy speculation I'm going to talk about may be true. So if you don't want to run the risk of anything being spoiled, uh, go see the movie and then just come back, uh, you know, if you feel up to it or feel like you want to do it and watch my video later. That's cool with me. So with that, let's get on to my theories and speculation. So right out the gate, I'm going to start with something that was kind of spoiled in a TV spot that I saw. And again, spoiler warning, you know, you can skip past this or come back later if you don't want things spoiled. But I do believe we're going to get a vocal cameo from Ash, from Ian Holm in this movie. Now, I don't know if we're just going to hear it in passing, like, over exposition, you know, over maybe like the opening credits of the movie, or if it's going to be a recording, or if there's going to be another android that somehow has his voice kind of put in there. But I think we are going to get a vocal cameo from Ash, from Ian Holm in this film. Now on to the second thing that was kind of spoiled. Uh, again, this one was not really anything I was seeking out. It just kind of popped up in a YouTube video I was watching where they made mention of it and I didn't know they were gonna talk about it. Otherwise, I would have stopped, but I did hear about this. And again, spoiler warning. I do know the big chap alien from the original Alien film will be in some form or fashion in this, in this film here. Now, I don't know if we're going to see the actual alien proper, that that alien's going to be alive and do anything in the film, or if it's just going to be maybe his dissected body or uh, just kind of like pictures of him, of like research they did, or if it's going to be how I know he's going to show up in this film. The toy line from NECA at the San Diego Comic-Con did release some images during Comic-Con of their figures they were producing for this film. And one of them was the kind of like cocoon that supposedly the big chap encased himself in when he got blown out of the Narcissus at the end of Alien. And so again, I think we're gonna see this asteroid kind of like encasement that he's in and we're going to see his outline in that kind of rock but i don't know if we're going to see his actual body or not but i do know in some form or fashion the original big chap alien is going to be referenced in this movie and is going to be part of the movie in some way so but those are the only two things i have kind of 
felt or confirmed from some stuff I saw. These next couple theories and speculations are purely that. So from here on out, this is all just me coming up with what I think might be in the movie. Okay, so now we're getting into the pure speculation, and as I said in my intro, this could just be 10-year-old Matt coming up with crazy ideas again, like I did for Aliens vs. Predator for all those years. <laughs> so I could be way off the mark, like none of this could actually happen, and I could look like an idiot. But, but I'm extremely excited, and I'm a fan, so here we go. Uh, I think a big plot point of this movie is going to revolve around, in part, maybe not fully, but in part based on the comic books of Aliens Genocide, where they introduce a different strain of alien, the red alien. And now I don't think we're necessarily going to see red aliens per se, that they're actually going to be red. But I feel like similar to how Alien Resurrection did something kind of like this, because those aliens in that film were based off the clones of Ripley that had the embryos cloned in them and they were kind of genetically engineered. They weren't pure xenomorph aliens. They were like second kind of strains down the line, you know, clones and whatever. So that's why they look kind of different and act a little bit differently. I think we're gonna get something similar to that here. And I think that's gonna revolve around the space station of Romulus and Remus that one side of the space station is going to have the classic xenomorph that we know from the original films, the more kind of like black colored flesh, you know, uh, aliens. And then the other side, it's going to be revealed probably in the second half of the movie or at some point in the story that the second half of the ship, the Remus side, is going to have this altered strain of aliens. I think we're going to see two kind of like warring hives of aliens that one side of the ship was in charge of creating the more genetically accurate alien that we know and love from the films. And then the other side was doing more experimentation and creating these other hybrids or these other like strains of aliens. And I think we're gonna see the two sides interact in this movie. Okay, so my next theory is on that same kind of baseline idea that we're going to see these two types of aliens. And I think they've been hiding it from the trailers, but I think a big plot point that's hidden, we're going to see a queen alien. And we're going to see a queen that is more in line with the traditional design and creation of James Cameron from Aliens. And she's going to be the queen of the hive of the more traditional uh, black flesh-colored aliens in, in this universe. But I think we're also potentially gonna see a king alien, which is an alien from the comic books that is gonna be the predominant, you know, master alien of the strain of aliens that's in the other side of the ship. And I think one of the big climactic scenes we're gonna see is the two aliens fighting each other. And ultimately, like how they went the route of Jurassic World and those sequels with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, I think because there's so much love and nostalgia and, you know, favor amongst the fans of the original Alien films and the original Queen Alien, that when the King Alien and the Queen Alien fight, the original Queen Alien is going to win. And she's going to kill the King. They're going to end up killing the other strain of aliens, you know, and kind of eradicate them. And the main universe aliens that everyone knows and love and, and that queen is going to be the one that survives this kind of battle. And potentially she could be the one that then ends up on LV-426 in Aliens. Potentially. I, I'm not 100% sure about that. Or she may lay an egg or somehow be related to the aliens that show up in the second Alien movie. But I do think we potentially are gonna see a king alien, a queen alien. They're gonna fight with these warring sides and the old school queen alien is the one who's gonna come out on top. So now kind of drifting away from the alien based stuff I think we might see and you know, speculation things. I think we are gonna see some reference in some form or fashion to the Colonial Marines in this movie. Initially, I thought the idea was gonna be we would see a young child on the colony that these teenagers, these kids kind of start out on. One of those children was gonna be 
the child version of one of the Marines from Aliens. But after seeing where the timeline kind of falls and the fact that there's like 30 or 30 plus years between this movie and Aliens, I don't think that's going to be possible because none of the Marines in that movie were in like their 50s, which would be the age they would have to be. They'd have to be in their like late 40s, early 50s to be in that movie and also be in this movie as a child. So I feel like that's not going to happen. Uh, we may see a reference to one of those Marines, you know, maybe like Hudson or Hicks or Vasquez or something. You're going to see maybe, again, just in passing, the camera's going to pass by a bunch of people or like a list of names on like a directory, and you're going to see one of those names come up, and that's in theory going to be like a parent or a grandparent of you know, one of the characters from Aliens. More to the point with this, and what I think may be more realistic to happen and not so much that, I think we are gonna see the Colonial Marines in this movie, but I don't think they're gonna be the Colonial Marines we know from Aliens, and I'm not 100% convinced they're actually gonna interact with the aliens and fight necessarily. I think they're going to just be there. Maybe they're recruiting kids on this mining colony at the start of the movie, and they're trying to like recruit maybe some of the characters from this movie. And it, again, kind of a throwaway scene, like they're out there with flyers, like, hey kids, join the Colonial Marines, you know, and they're gonna have their garb of the time in reference to aliens. And the main characters are just gonna like take the paper and roll it up and throw it in a trash can or something and just be like, who wants to do that? You know, and they're just gonna be there kind of in the background and fans of the series are gonna be like, eh, yep, I get it you know, but it's not going to play a crucial role in the movie. But I do think we're going to see the Colonial Marines in some aspect, some form in this film. Okay, so now we're on to my final theory and speculation point that I want to get into. And I think out of all of these things I talked about, the warring alien classes, the Marines, and all that stuff. Outside of the few things I, I feel like have been kind of spoiled in TV spots, this one I'm going to talk about here, I think, is the most likely to happen and most realistic to happen, like, in this movie. And I think what we're going to find out at the end of this movie, either in the final act or potentially the final scene, right before we go, go to black, you know, cut to black to the end credits, we're going to find out that the main female character that survives this movie, I, you know, just depending which one it is, whoever that female character is that survives, I feel like is going to reveal that the name she's been using this entire time is an alias or an adopted name, and that her real name is Amanda Ripley, and that she's Ellen Ripley's daughter, and that after her mom had gone missing on the Nostromo, she got put into an orphanage or into foster care. She was adopted out by another family and her name was changed. And she's been going by this other name in the movie. And it's going to be revealed in some way at the end of the film that her name is actually Amanda Ripley. The reason this could happen is not only because I heard uh, some like little blurbs and stuff from like cast and crew and Fetty Alvarez, that they took inspiration from Alien Isolation, which is one of the more recent Alien games and actually is a very good game. And I, I recommend you go and play it if you're into video games. It's a very good horror-themed Alien game instead of the more traditional, like, action shoot 'em up style Alien games that they've produced over the years. But they said that they took inspiration from that. Now, that could also mean sets and characteristics of the Alien, but I think that's kind of loosely alluding to the fact that the main character of that game is Amanda Ripley and that she's been searching for her mom after she went missing. And I think this movie is going to link in with that and we're going to see Amanda Ripley be the main woman character. It's going to be revealed at the end. And the big reason I think they're doing this is so that if this movie performs well and it gets positive reviews and everyone seems to like it and it generates a good amount of, of money for Disney and for Fox, that it's going to leave the story somewhat open-ended at the end of this film so that that woman character who's Amanda Ripley can then be moved into a sequel following this, whether it's under Fetty Alvarez's direction or someone else, but that they will make a more closely inspired alien isolation movie 
to where it's then going to follow Amanda Ripley, maybe through just one sequel, maybe through two sequels, who knows, but that it's going to follow her on her journey to try and find her mother, but then she ends up in an odd way replicating what her mother kind of does, fighting these aliens, and she's going to follow a parallel path as her mother, even though they don't really know what each other's going through, it's going to be very similar. And I think another big part of this is not only the Alien Isolation game, but I think because of the deleted scene that's in the director's cut of Aliens, where Ripley looks at a photo and Burke tells her, oh yeah, she Amanda died, she was 67 in Wisconsin, all this stuff, very pixelated photo that almost looks like it's photoshopped, that the company lied to Ripley and told her this fake backstory that Amanda died and all this stuff just to force Ripley into isolation and to eventually get her on board when they send the colonists to the hive, to the derelict, and cause the infestation. And knew that if Ripley knew Amanda was still alive, even if she was 60 or 70 years, years old, Ripley would not go along with what they were gonna do. They had to plant that seed in her head that Amanda was dead and that she needed to feel isolated and then go along with their plans. The whole aspect of the main character of this film is gonna turn out to be Amanda Ripley. I think that's a very highly likely scenario of something that's going to happen at the end of this movie. So there you go. There's my theories and speculation about this film. Uh, as you've probably noticed in my other videos this week, I'm extremely excited. And I want to encourage everyone, if you're a fan of this series or just a fan of Fetty Alvarez as a director, uh, go out and see this movie and support it and let Disney and Fox and everyone know with your money that this series is worth keeping around and worth investing in for this generation. And as a side note, not just to go on about that, I just wanna say thank you to everyone out there, for everyone who's watched my content and subscribed to my channel. I know I say this a lot, but especially for this week because I'm extremely proud of myself for being able to get five videos out this week. That is way more content than I ever film. Uh, normally it's like one, maybe two videos a week. And a lot of times I film a lot of content kind of back to back on my free time. So to be able to actually get five consecutive videos out, basically filming like one a day and then getting it edited and uploaded the very next day, I'm extremely proud of myself. And I'm also very happy that everyone out there stuck with me because this content is not typically what I've done on my channel. I may have mentioned, you know, some DVDs or Blu-rays or movies here and there, but I don't go into a whole lot of depth and I don't go into a bunch of detail and I typically don't just sit here and talk about my like memories and my musings about films and stuff like that. So this was quite a departure from everything I've done up to this point. So I just wanna say thank you again to everyone who's, you know, supported me and commented on these videos and liked these videos and, you know, everything. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm gonna do a Alien Romulus kind of spoiler-free, down and dirty, kind of quick review after I see it that I'm gonna try and get uploaded relatively quickly uh, as soon as I can uh, because I am working all weekend. So I've got to fit going to see the movie and fit doing the video and editing it and uploading it all kind of in with my work schedule, which isn't the easiest thing to do. And uh, I'm also gonna do a video about the Alamo Draft House because uh, my wife and I have this, we are gonna go there. We're still just trying to decide which day we're gonna go. Uh, and the main reason for that, I have a custom shirt that I had made uh, for this movie. I ordered it online and had it rush delivered. Uh, so depending what day it gets delivered here, uh, is going to impact what day we're going to go because I want to wear it <laughs> to the show. So, uh, yeah. So anyways, after this weekend, you know, once we get into next week, I'm going to be back to just kind of my normal schedule and my normal kind of content. And maybe down the road, if another movie interests me or if I just feel like it for a change of pace, maybe I'll do something like this again with another series. But this Alien franchise, this series, I don't know if I could do this kind of style of video and this many videos about 
anything else because this series is so near and dear to my heart and holds so much weight and nostalgia with me that it was easy for me to make these videos and sit here and just talk to everybody where I don't know with other franchises if I could do that but we'll see how it goes you know down the road we're done with that Alien Romulus it's here so Everybody who enjoys this franchise, go out and see it. Support it. You know, let me know in the comments if you want to see it. Tell me how close I was in any of my theories. If I got something right or if I was just way off in outer space being that, you know, 10-year-old kid again. But anyways, go see Alien and Romulus. Let's have a great time this weekend. I'll see you next week on Secondhand Home Theater.